Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Monkey Business. Today, I'm your host, Warren Wadsworth. We discuss the 1985 classic Clue, named after and based on the 1940s board game. Great board game. Thankfully, I'm not alone today. So who am I joined by? Nobody. No. Nobody. Mr. Body's body, it's gone. Whatever shall we do about this? To find out, let's meet our esteemed company. First up, our resident Colonel Mustard, Carter. Am I right in thinking there's nobody else joining us? I think you would be wrong in thinking that. Wrong meaning wrong no one else will be joining us or wrong someone else will be joining us. In fact, the double negative has proved proof positive because next up, he was once a professor of psychiatry specializing in helping paranoid and homicidal lunatics suffering from delusions of grandeur, but now he works for the United Nations. So nothing's changed. It's her very own Professor Plum. It's Will. How's it going, Will? Pretty good. How about you, bro? I'm doing great because, last but not least, our first ever Monkey Business guest star at the age of 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. Nope, sorry. It's 10 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, not 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. Point is, it's Mr. Green, Mr. Jeff Y. Green. It's Joseph. How's it going, Joseph? Going pretty well. Pretty well. The first ever guest on the podcast. It's an honor. It is quite an honor, and we're honored to have you here. Well, technically, you're the second. It says you'll be the first published guest on the model. Oh, well, we've, we've, we've had half a guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> half a guest? What? <laughs> Do you get half a person? Some might say so. <laughs> I don't know. He's a big boy. Anyway, Warren, what are we talking about? <laughs> so, 1985 Clue. This was one that I'd, I'd heard. I'm not sure how to explain it. I'd heard of it, and I knew different snippets about it, but I'd never actually seen, like, clips or anything of it. How about you guys? Had you seen this before or heard of it before? What was your familiarity with it? I Yeah, I, I knew the movie existed, but it wasn't something that had ever really been on my radar of must-see films. How about you, Carter? I mean, been very aware of, of it for, you know, some time. I've seen the first 10 or 20 minutes uh, multiple times on TV and never got any farther. So, was happy that I was able to this time. That's actually a very good way of describing it. Okay, Joseph, how about you? Well, I mean, this was my pick or request I had already seen it twice prior to this. So. I thought you'd seen it three times. Now, yes, I've seen it three times. Okay. So, Quigley Joseph was very familiar with this. Yep. Before we really get into it, I will say, this is one of those movies that, I don't know, this is kind of the norm for older movies, you know how they always have the credits at the beginning? You know, you know it's going to be a long intro, and the first thing it says is starring in alphabetical order. <laughs> it starts, <laughs> Well, there aren't it's that like, many oh, members boy. of the cast. And that's, there weren't really, but I was... That's a very common occurrence if you watch enough movies. That happens plenty of times. It's not... It, it, it feels like usually they at least have something going on. Like, you know, a panorama of the skyline or something. But if I'm remembering correctly, isn't it just like a black screen when they start the credits? Oh, uh, might be. Couldn't yeah. tell you. It was I a bit of last a... night, though. Yeah, okay. All right, well... Let's get into it. To start, I would say that I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was a great uh, little murder mystery. And very interesting and very kind of faithful to the game um, somehow, which is probably not easy to do taking a board game and adapting it into a movie. But it did it well, and it did it very playfully. Well, let's start there then. How big of a fan were you guys of the board game? Oh, big fan, big fan. I'm also a big fan of the board game. Play like Same once here, or I'm twice. A... It's a great board game if you've never Rookie. played other board games. Nah, it's <laughs> I I love it. It's one of my favorite board games. It's a blast. Agreed. Okay. It's a blast. All right. You're not a fan, Will. I'm kind <laughs> of a fan, but it's like y'all. I'm such a big fan. I have never heard you guys once ever say, "Dude, let's play Clue." Well, that's because a six-player game. I don't yeah. own Clue. We should you know, not own Clue. Are you a big fan of it? 
<laughs> we gotta get <laughs> it. Siblings who own it. <laughs> okay. Goodness. We used to own it, but then we lost all the pieces. All of them? Kind of like, kind there's of like, like no pieces. Kind of there's not a lot of it. It's cards. <laughs> what, happened? what happened to the key? Where did the key go? Wait, we had the, like, the kids' version of Clue, right? <laughs> we had a couple different versions. Oh, Clue Jr.? Yeah, we had that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we had a couple of spinoffs that was... What was the... It was, called, it was like... Something about Mystery at the Museum or something? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah the spinoff of Clue. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, I guess with, one of Carter's points with how, where, how it's really true to the game... I don't really remember how the board game or how like the game board is set up, right? Uh, so I forget if the past the secret passages that they use were like the actual ones that are on the game. They are. I they are okay. Yep. But I was thinking that I really like that. And then the other thing was um the ending. I remember while the ending is going on, right? How there's spoiler warning. Wait, spoiler the warning. Endings. Uh... It's a it's a movie podcast, Warren. If you haven't seen Clue, this is your From last chance before coming to <laughs> If you haven't seen this 38-year-old movie, guy, it's huge spoilers. Anyway, it, it was really interesting to see a movie have, was it, uh, three endings? Yep. Right? Well, yeah, it was two it was, alternate endings, and then one, here's what actually happened. So three endings, yeah. Um, of, yeah. So in the side of the three endings, I was like, is this, like, a good thing or a bad thing that oh, I loved it. all of the um actors and actresses and all the characters together could be written in such a fluid way where anyone could have done it and I was like you know what I don't really know if you take this apart and just put it on a board and go critically this is good or bad but I thought it was very very effective and it really held true to how the game works right well yeah you always have these same simple things and you always have this and at one point everybody is the murderer at the very end so yeah, I, I I really enjoyed the ending. I loved how it was like, here's how it happened. And it was like, or this is how it happened, but this is what really happened. Just super fun way to wrap up a film. Yes, it's almost like if a player got a guess wrong and then that's the ending that isn't what actually happened. And then the correct thing, like the correct guess for the game would be, here's what actually happened ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, liked it a lot. And it's also not, like, something you have to judge critically because there's no template, there's no standard to... There's no mold that you put a movie in. So this one's just a murder mystery based off a game, and it's saying, shuffle the cards around and make three endings with it. I thought it was really cool. One thing that's really interesting is that originally, in, in 1985, when it came out in theaters, there would only be one ending at your showing, and you'd have to go see it again at like another theater, depending on which theater you went on, you would see a different ending. Okay, so they would send out all the different things. Now we're getting to like the Netflix Bandersnatch. All right, that's that's <laughs> awful. Yeah, uh, that that sounds terrible. I saw about that. Is it, like, it's pretty. It's pretty goofy. Okay, they did, thought it would. Did you guys ever watch like, Bandersnatch? There's like and Netflix I, is like pick your own adventure. Not nah, I watch Black Mirror. That was kind of a disappointment. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, okay. It's from giving me flashbacks of that now. But, yeah, they thought that that would triple the box office, but it, it didn't. It didn't <laughs> help them at all. <laughs> I also like how this movie totally would just rip off other movies, kind of like in modern. Like, it rips off a Gone with the Wind at the very end. Frankly, Scarlet. And I was like, that's hilarious, man. You know, this movie, this movie is just goofy sometimes. Yeah. Man. It doesn't really take itself seriously, but it does some stuff pretty well. There are some things that I definitely really didn't like about it, but overall, like, Wadsworth was very fun when he's running around at the end, uh -huh. and the pairings of everybody and how they're paranoid and just freaking out. And just, like, how huge that candlestick is, man. And just, like, who brings up this box of presents? Oh, here's some murder weapons. Oh, and then the scene where, what, um, was it Mrs. White is choking, um... Levette or whatever her name is or Yvette to death and she's just like pushing down on the noose and I'm like how would that ever kill somebody it's the funniest thing in the world man well I'm glad you brought up Wadsworth because really hope Tim Curry had a good chiropractor because my goodness did he carry this movie on his back far and away I mean just light years above everyone else if it wasn't for him this movie would have been a complete flop in my opinion what do you guys think for you? You fans of Tim Curry? Yes. I'm fans Actually, of Wadsworth. I don't know if I'm fans yeah, of that was Tim, Tim Curry. Curry. 
He played, they he actually, played Wadsworth, the butler. They almost no, cast I know, Rowan Atkinson. I don't Atkinson. know anything else Tim Curry does. Who? They almost cast Rowan Atkinson as Wadsworth. You know what? I could actually cut that. That would have been disaster. so much better. No, it wouldn't have. <laughs> that would have no. been pretty much great. better. No, that... <laughs> I, I can't picture his face like I would pick going around. Yeah, it would have been weird. Dude, it would have been weird, man. But it no, I'm a good would have been Mr. Bean for her. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, they also for Mrs. Scarlet, they also considered Carrie Fisher, but like she had something else going on. She wasn't able to. Was it oh. Star Wars? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> that was like some rehab thing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. It was not a movie. <laughs> it's personal issues. But I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Tim Curry. I thought he's just absolutely hilarious in this. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say that he carried it, but obviously he's the standout. He's he, he definitely the star. Gives the best performance, probably. I think. But I mean, all the actors that played all the um, all their color characters was they were great too. I thought. Are they though? I, I yeah, I, I think they're pretty great. Pretty interesting. I would disagree. I'm with I'm more with Warren on this one. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I really do think that um, Tim Curry carries a lot, and then the rest of the cast kind of follows in tow with his energy mm -hmm. and kind of keeps, like, he, he sets the tone for how goofy, how fun a scene is going to be. And it's almost I agree like, there fully, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, what's a good analogy here? Tim Curry's like that elite point guard that even when the other, the other players are playing well, it's because he's setting them up to play well. He's giving them great dishes for wide open shots. Yeah, I also really like Mr. Green. I thought he was. Of course like you a do, Mr. Green. <laughs> well, actually, he's played by Michael McKean, who plays uh, Chuck McGill in Better Call Saul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of Drums. course. Life. <laughs> okay, well, speaking of Tim Curry, I'm glad you brought this up because what I saw Tim Curry in originally, I think the first thing I saw him at and was an episode of Psych, and. Well, we're on that tangent. Psych has an episode, and it's one of the later seasons, that's basically, it's a parody of Clue the movie, but what's a parody that like pays homage to the movie? I don't know what the word for that is. An homage. It, it, well, <laughs> it, it's not like making fun of it, but it's like, it's basing itself on the, it's like an episode that's styled after Clue the movie. I, and dude, so, I, there is a word for it. Yeah, um, I can't remember what the word is. I think it is homage, but... <laughs> that episode that episode even has Christopher Lloyd in it who plays Professor Plum. And so, yeah, that was I'd seen the Clue so episode a, yeah, of Psych before seeing Clue the movie, so it's kind a of direct interesting homage. Seeing, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's pretty exactly yeah. so by it was definition interesting seeing what the movie was based is. on after seeing this thing that was like a parody of it. How would you guys kill somebody? Like which which tool would you go for first? Because I'm saying if you've got all the options to you in that room like Yvette come on you're gonna start with the candlestick girl and also how did they get the bodies in there like how did she like how is everybody killing everybody and how is everybody so strong to move all these dead people around like the they cook was propped up in that thing and then she fell out <laughs> I'm just saying dude you're saying you can't prop someone up <laughs> Dude, that girl was well, kind of... Well, it did take them, like, six people yeah, to carry her. Like, six, yeah, she six, was three pretty to five big. people to character, dude. <laughs> it's, it's, it's back to... Well, not to always go back to Scream, but, I mean, to go back to Scream with how did What's-His-Name get on top of the van? But also, <laughs> like, everyone, nobody really has a real alibi. Yeah. Lots of where it is to Scream. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know if the clues were set up as well. It's similar to Scream. You know, it's not really, like, something you can track and figure out. Because nobody has a real alibi. While you're watching. Yeah, but I I do think it's... The alibi problem is better than Scream in here. Then, like, when Tim Curry, at the end, just goes and explains everything that happened, it makes a lot more sense. It's very... It, it's very believable. Maybe mm -hmm. just because they're all trapped in a house, it's a lot simpler. But, um, I think it works. Well, yeah, cause, and we see that it works because at the end, the movie could have been written with any one of them being the bad guy solely, mm -hmm. and then there's this, that, or the other thing that people can get blamed for. But that's kind of the beauty of the board game, which is personified in this. I don't know if I'd say that's the beauty of the board game. That any, that, well, that he said it changes every time. 
Like, it can be anybody, and all you have is what's in front of you, right? If a board game was the same every stinking time, it'd be very, very dull. Anyways, back to back to the film. <laughs> what do you guys think about the opening? Because, to me, the opening felt really choppy. Felt like every shot was about 10 seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another... Here's another character, and they're entering it back to the butler and back to the dogs, and I don't know. The opening felt choppy. It didn't flow at all. I like the shot of the house, though. With the lightning in the background? Yeah. yeah that was great. A lot of lightning crashes after someone would say a lot of dialogue. Funny stuff. Yeah, that was the best I liked part. It. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought Shit. those dogs were going to matter more. Yeah. Anybody else? Yep. Also, the dog mm-hmm. that jumped out at the garden... Or at the uh, the greenhouse thing was a different dog than the ones that were yeah. Where did he come from? And I was like, where, "Where's this Rottweiler coming from? Hello!" And how does he know to be there? <laughs> yeah, it's like ah, because when they go back in there, the dog. I was expecting like another jump scare with the dog or something, but no, dog's not there now. So I was like, "Oh, that was pretty convenient timing." Yeah, the dogs just vanished. Like at the ending, they just weren't there. Mm-hmm. It was the dogs who did it. The fourth <laughs> ending. They had, they the, had dogs the dogs in out. <laughs> <Got them. laughs> uh, dog with the ham bone. Ham bone dog. So I'll say this. I like the ending a lot more than the beginning. I I made a note about halfway to two thirds through the movie, and I quote, it really feels like a high school drama production. It's a t- until we, got to the, to. until we got to the end with uh, like all the characters running around and trying to figure out what happened, for the first probably three quarters of the movie, the writing was really bad at times, and there wasn't a whole lot to keep you watching for the first hour or so. Well, I mean, there were murders. But the murders and the mystery, yeah. I think it's just so snappy and so fast that it, like, I was just fully invested the whole time. I don't think it was like a high school drama at all. I think it's just an 80s movie in a house. Well, I don't. What I mean by that is in terms of the uh, acting level and the, the set felt like a high school production set. And some of the performances felt like high school performances. Did any of you get that at all? I, be because couple. there wasn't any CGI Warren. And no, you're not I used think that's to, just like, what real houses, stuff. Like it's in old manner. That's what they look like. I'm, see, I'm not and sure. And the if reason, this is, like, high maybe school... this is praise of the high school productions I've seen, or maybe it's just an indictment of. Yeah, the reason they look like that is because they're trying to replicate the look of a manor. Yeah, I know and that one's just two D, and just... this one has, you know, all four walls. Did it though? Yeah, because yeah. I think <laughs> the budget was like 15 million or something. 10 million. So they definitely, it was shot at a real house, I think. Okay. Carter, yep. um, before you go any further, the definition of clue is in this suspenseful clue game, players have to find out who's responsible for murdering Mr. Body of Tudor Mansion. So if you could stop saying the word manor, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. You mean synopsis? It's not a definition. No, it's, it's the definition. Summary? <laughs> Listen, I hate to be the one to... I don't like that I'm doing this, man. I really don't. But I'm with Warren. <laughs> See, I'm not I crazy. Am, <laughs> I am alongside Warren. Way too much like sexual innuendo type jokes totally turned me off to a lot of the film. I'm not gonna lie. Like it was it's like that's like the entire opening, act. and I was like, no, uh, why is this here? I don't. I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> um, uh, it's like Yvette's character when she died. I was, was oh. Get out of here, trash. And um Okay, let's let's not go that far. <laughs> I, I was happy. I, I felt elation, Warren. But like, yeah, no, the the beginning of the movie didn't do anything for me. I really got invested once we were solving the final murder and stuff like that. And once once people who weren't just Mr. Body and the cook and that driver guy died, and I was like, Oh, as soon as they killed the cop, I was like, Oh, these people are like just killing people now. This is neat. And because I didn't think they would kill a cop in the movie, and then they did, and I was like, oh. And then the gay guy turns out to be an FBI agent, and I was like, oh, what? And I was like, okay. It's like that that phone call from J. Edgar Hoover, that was for me. Why do you think his name's Hoover? 
<laughs> that was a yes, great he... line. There's some up. funny lines in this film. There but, are. But at the beginning, I and they're all Wadsworth. Really didn't almost all. They yeah, yeah they really are almost all Wadsworth. He... Yeah. But um, I I think the beginning is just chock full of funny lines too. Like, um, Warren, you opened with like one of my favorites. You know about the um, working with patients who were paranoid, homicidal, <laughs> and had delusions of grandeur. And your work hasn't changed because now you work for the UN. I I I don't mind the beginning. I think it's I don't see how you don't make it choppy like this when you're trying to introduce six characters all at once, bring them into a house, because you're not going to stagger the introductions. They're all going to come in at once, and then taking a board game and making it into a movie. Like how do you relate? You know, you know, like Miss Scarlet and Miss Peacock and Professor Plum and Colonel Mustard together, and then the movie says. Well, they all have some sort of relationship to each other because they all either live in or work for Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's that's what I meant by choppy because obviously you're going to have them stagger the introductions. Yeah. What I meant is more so just from, and I hardly ever notice stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't usually care about the shot selection for the cinematography that much, but every single shot for the first 10 or 15 minutes, it feels like, is five to ten seconds long even for this one introduction for a given character you'd have a shot of the door opening and then a shot of the butler and then a shot of them checking their shoes and then a shot as they enter the next room and then it's a bunch of static camera shots and i mean this was the 80s so i guess they didn't have camera work was a little more more technically challenging back then but um yeah yeah it felt like none of the shots were designed well at the beginning I don't think they were very technically challenged in the 80s. I mean, a little bit less so than today, but I think it's maybe trying to replicate you know, you know a 40s needed, atmosphere. Yeah. It needed a Michael Bay drone shot for every introduction. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Zoom down the side of the, the mansion. Actually, okay, you bring up a good point, though, because was this supposed to be set in the 40s or 50s? I don't know when it's supposed oh. to be set. But, but it's, it's clearly trying to, to replicate like... and homage that kind of style. The, yeah, you know, because the, it was supposed to be set in like like thirty or forty years prior, right? To when it released I, I don't in the eighties. No better, Joseph. Do you know? You've seen it three times. I, I don't know when I it's thought it was to be set, set in the fifties. I mean, the cars looked kind of newer. Okay, well, we'll have to check on that in a second. But my question is this: because they're not eighties cars, though. No, yeah, they're not eighties cars. A lot of the physical comedy if you want to call it that from like people running into each other and dropping glasses and somebody hitting the gong and somebody falls over all that kind of stuff it reminded me a lot of the three stooges which i think was was that 50s 50s? or 60s yeah so it would make sense if that was one one of the types of styles of that era that they were trying to emulate okay it's set in 1954 okay so yeah, it's just trying to make, it's trying to somehow pull a murder mystery out of a script which every line is a like a '40s noir one-liner, and I I thought that was just hysterical to watch. So yeah, I think it's definitely a a very fun watch. It is. Might not be the word I'd use to describe it, but it was a watch. <laughs> hey, you deceived me with that opening, Warren. I thought you were like. Totally on board with this, but yeah, you're just you're just a good host. Apparently, well, I mean, very true. I, I this might not. I'll leave you guessing by saying, I hated the beginning and love the ending. Dude, I, Warren and I are just the yeah. same person today. <laughs> like, just, just everything on exactly that we the say, same page. I'm just going. Yes, dude. The beginning was like characters were obnoxious and it was slow and it was weird. And I was like, okay, let's, can we go? And there's just too many jokes of this type. And then, then eventually I was like, oh, people are dying. Let's go. And then just eventually when they're wrapped up and the multiple endings, oh, great. Once they just let Tim Curry do all the dialogue, that's when it got great. You know what? That's 100% correct. I, and he was just doing like 50% everyone. of the dialogue though, so... Yeah. I mean, Once he was running around and pretending to be people and like slapping people and throwing people around, that's what yeah. he's best. <laughs> yeah, the, the comedy finally was 
funny to me, like actually funny and not just like a one liner here yeah. or there. As soon as he was doing all of the big antics at the at the very end, all of the reveal type stuff. Yeah. I I thought the slapstick was worked all the way through pretty much like them like shooting the door down and the chandelier falling and then it the chandelier falls again at the end for the one ending. I, yeah, that was that was pretty, Fun pretty fact, great stuff. The psych core episode also has a similar chandelier falling down, which I now realize now realize why. That's why. <laughs> What do you guys think of the Back to the Future start? Was this before or after Back to the Future? Same year, I think. So I oh really don't know. Yeah, ah, these two okay. movies came out in the same year. Yeah, I don't know which oh, yeah, got first. No, just one of these is a fantastic film. Which one is it? Well, <laughs> the one we have to go back to. In the Wait, we have to go back to Clue though. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh-huh. was it Professor Plum in both of these? He's he's the same actor who plays. Yeah, yeah. The actor who played Professor Plum is Christopher Lloyd, who's yeah, Doc in Back to the Future. Yes. Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah, it's boring. When I forget which killer it was at this point, when the killer turns the power out to the house, how is the phone still working? I can't remember if it was the police officer or the driver, but whoever Warren, it is, your phone line and your power goes line out are different. But the phone still has power. You still have to have power for the phone to work. Does it? I'm not I'm not super familiar with nineteen something or other I think. It's been a while since I've used a landline. But it still has a power cord, right? Well, yeah, but this is like an old rotary phone too, so Yeah, but I don't know. That's a good question. Well it's so like I'm pretty sure if the power out to the house the landline would not work, I think. Well, the, well, don't they make a point of cutting a different line in We're order young to for that. sever the telephone connection later in the movie when the cops are actually talking on the phone? Somebody, like, I forget, they, like, set something down on the line or something or unplugged the line or something. Yeah. So well, I think it, it implies from inside that, the house. Though, that was when the power was back the on, though. I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with of 1950s this. electronics. Yeah. Gotta watch more 1950s movies, Warren. I mean, well, you're our you're our best best shot here. You have do you have some memories of the the nineties? <laughs> no, nah, so no, not really. What's your very like, first memory? What's your remote? earliest memory? <laughs> My earliest memory? Have you guys not heard this? No, I. That's why I asked you. I oh, okay, please, okay, please okay. do not repeat this. All right. <laughs> Wait, no, All right, I haven't heard it. Oh, no. let's, let's switch topics here. <laughs> All right, Joe, I'll fill you in later. It's kind of a funny one. Okay, <laughs> Is that okay. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so yeah, so I didn't have much on the first ending. I think the believability, I think it was higher than the second ending because... Because of how it was framed. Because the second one was like, well, here's how it also could have happened. The first one, you didn't have that at all. Oh, yeah, but I'm just talking about, like, like Miss Peacock for the second ending. Like, do you really believe she could have done all that? She's a pretty elderly lady, and she's, like, <laughs> doing acrobatic things, like sneaking up the stairs, like, getting away really quick and then getting back down. Are you saying geriatric people aren't quick, Joe? I'm still saying elderly people. Usually you ever seen quick. elderly people at live? Joe, if disrespecting like elderly people going on. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> they can rampage like the rest of them. Well, yeah, I think Miss Scarlet being the killer, uh, I gave that a 4 out of 10 of believability. <laughs> you gave each of the endings? A, okay. <laughs> well, In yeah, because belief about technically, enjoyment or what? as Carter said before, like, a different theater, you would get a different ending. So to the people who watched it in theaters, that was the real so, ending. So you're just referring to your enjoyment of the ending or how good of an ending you thought it was. Yeah, how good of an ending. Okay. Well, I didn't even think about that. If you don't get the other two endings... Then I would really... That, yeah, you really wouldn't That's like a that. really short movie. That's like, what, an hour well, 20? Or 15? Each of the endings is only like five minutes. So it's probably around like... Yeah. Three, well, 80. it's an hour 36. So Okay, yeah, never mind, never mind. So it cuts off ten minutes of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But... I I didn't see the old lady 
really as being the murder. I was like, eh. I saw the what the madame is that what it's like a lady who runs um Miss Scarlet. Yeah, Miss Scarlet. I kind of saw her. I was like, okay, that's kind of believable, sure. And then the one where they everyone did it, I'm like, oh, spoilers for Murder on the Orient Express. But yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, sure, whatever. And but that's kind of like Joseph. Have you seen that yet? Did we just spoil it for you? Uh, I saw a play of it. Oh, okay, okay. But sure. it's like, yeah, it's like Murder on the Orient Express. It kind of gave me those same exact vibes of, oh, okay. I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this yeah. was the most fun one as well. Yeah. Well, I I was also, after watching all those Scream movies, I thought it was very likely that multiple people were in on it, but it was cool that they all had, nobody knew what the other people were going to do, and they weren't in coots with each other. They just everyone had their own motive for their own personal mission, and there were a lot of people with a lot of missions. And a lot of people brought black leather gloves. Like, okay, didn't see those before. That's just but a 50s thing. I guess we're doing yeah. that now. <laughs> Wait, so was there a secret entrance to the library? Because Which room was the library? I felt like, so that was... The yeah, there was the library. secret, that's one of the secret bookcase, right? Or is that the attic? Oh, no, no, wait. The room that the cop was in. Which, which room was that? That's the lounge, right? No, is that the no? The lounge is where they killed Mister Body. Well, well, there was the didn't... was it the secret fireplace to the painting? Was that one of the secret passageways? Because I felt like the shot for when they killed the cop, I, I thought the shot showed them opening the door. Yeah, the, they they came out of the painting for that one to kill the cop. Oh, oh okay. Painting was in the study, right? I'm bringing up. The board. I'm looking up. I'm looking at the board as well. <laughs> okay, or maybe not the cop, but it was the, the secret passageway goes from the study to the kitchen, so that was from the painting to the freezer, and then the other secret passageway is from the lounge to the conservatory. That yeah, the cop was in the conservatory. I think no, I don't know. No, he's in the there's lounge. Wherever the phone was, that's where they were. I don't remember where the phone was, because I saw something about it. Like somebody said. The door to wherever the cop was at, or either the cop or the other guy. I don't remember what his name was. I think the cop was the motorist. The, the motorist, yeah. The, the so room... the motorist is in the lounge. The study was where the phone was and where the cop died. Because they went from the kitchen to the study. Okay. I saw somebody make the point that that door, though, was like locked, and then the shot had them opening the door, but the key was thrown away. No, he threw a fake key, remember? No, but it was one of the... Uh, that was for the weapons. That were uh, the oh, okay. Also, I think, looking at... The, if I if the board... I'm assuming they did it exactly like the board, right? So then, the very first room is the study. Like, if you come in and go to the right, and that's where they kept the cook and Mr. Body, right? That's where they kept all the weapons locked up as well. And yeah. the weapons. So then the library yeah. is where the cop died. Because that's the one room over to the left. The library has a fireplace in the board game as well. So probably. Yeah. But so does the study. Wait, but they did secret. Oh, but the lounge doesn't. Wait, but then they would oh, have a dude, secret passageway they... from the library. What? Dude, this, I'm so confused. This game was not, this movie did not hold true well, to this game board, man. <laughs> they had to do one thing. We can't even remember which room is which, so I don't think we're going to remember who was where yeah, doing what. I, I think they did hold the bell. I just, no. It's been a week since I've seen it. I don't remember any exact rooms. They should have um, definitely I, taken like some I saw it less than 24 hours ago and I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, moving on. Joseph, what did you think about the second ending? Is that what you were That's talking the about? The second ending? Well, I mean, in all of the movies, I think. I mean, in all the endings, they opened a locked door with something. But, um, yeah, it was the second ending was Miss Peacock being the killer. Yes. Which... She didn't look like she could move very fast. To exactly. Be getting around. She looked pretty spry and youthful. And then, I don't know about that. Um, oh, yeah, Wadsworth was the it FBI was all agent. That. He was the FBI agent, and the second one was Wadsworth. Yes. But, yeah. What well, would you Peacock, rate that one? Miss Peacock is not agile enough to be doing all that, though. So hey, it could I all would, be an act. I gave it two out of ten. Oh, my. 
uh, you never saw those Uncle Drew commercials with Kyrie Irving? But... Yeah, but he's not actually old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe Mrs. Peacock wasn't either. Well, she looked it, man. Well, I mean, so Uncle, Drew Uncle Drew commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she's secretly like a lizard humanoid. <laughs> Wait, well, have you seen those Uncle Drew commercials? <laughs> yes, oh I, yes, okay. yes, I okay. have seen those commercials for it. <laughs> All right, Joseph, what do you think of the final one thing? Oh, there was a telegram girl, too. Dude, I love oh, yeah. She just got shot. Yeah. That's hilarious. Like, I received telegram. Bam. It's hilarious. Third inning, Joseph, what you got? What you think? Okay, so Professor Plum, it would, this one makes sense because Professor Plum said Mr. Body was dead, but he wasn't actually, so it makes sense that he killed Mr. Body. That is what they say. Yes. Yes. And then he got, Professor Plum got the gun in the dark, stole the gun, which also makes sense because he could probably be moving quicker than his peacock. <laughs> but um, he, okay, so when he goes back to kill Mr. Body, he is the one missing from the kitchen when that happened so there's also that and then well the one thing about this is how could any of them know about the secret passages in the house except for um the first ending miss scarlet her business was secrets so that would make sense that she knew how to get through the passages but well how her and colonel mustard else... found at least one of the secret passages as well yeah but like before they found them, someone was already using them. Definitely for the cook, yes. And for the guy in the lounge, yeah. So how would uh, because, any of the killers doesn't, know? Doesn't um, Mustard no. kill him? Yeah, no, but, yeah, yeah. because Mustard kills the guy. Yeah, and in, isn't it Yvette kills the who kills, Isn't it Yvette who kills the cook? Yeah, Yvette kills Yeah, and she would cook. know the house. She because would, but, we don't, but it doesn't explain true. the fireplace one to uh, where the motorist is being kept. Who was the informant on Colonel Mustard? But doesn't that happen after Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet find the secret passageway? Yeah, but how, so how does he know about it originally? Wait, no, no, they, but they in, found it when they're searching the house. In yeah, the, in ending yeah, three, yeah, but then they walk to where he's dead. Oh, uh, yeah. In ending three, Miss Peacock kills the cook, though. No, right? I don't remember. I, I'm pretty sure that's what they, they said again. I know the mustard one didn't make a ton of sense to me because I'm like, how did how did he know that? I don't think how, it's... How did he know that that secret passage was there? But then I guess it's also like the board game where it's just, eh, you suspend a little belief and have some fun with it. Yeah, I don't think it's written to explain every question. Yeah, yeah. I don't and think also, it is at all. I'm... Miss Peacock moving the cook's body on her own <laughs> into the, the fridge or freezer. She waited, yeah. for the, she waited for the cook <laughs> to walk up into the freezer and <laughs> lean against the door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then Miss White. That was her name, right? Miss White. The the morning five husband lady? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, five, yeah, five that husband. gets Miss White. She kills you a bit. Because. Oh, that's right. Jealousy. Yes, something with one of her husbands, I think. And then she was given the rope also for that, which was the murder weapon that killed you bit. In the beginning, she's given the rope, so. And then, I think that's all that I had on that. Oh, I gave that an 8 out of 10 for the ending. Real ending. It's going to jump 2 to 4 to 8. Yeah. Or 4 to 2 to 8. Well, it makes sense that it's more believable because it says it's what actually happened in the end. It's also more believable when it wasn't one person running around doing everything. Yeah. Well, it was two sometimes. Probably, probably, yeah. But And Wadsworth got in on it, so that made it more believable because he's... Yeah. He seems very much in control when everyone else was not so much. Yeah. Oh, that's when... Um, and also in control was acting when everyone else was not so much. That's the one where Mr. Green shot Wadsworth, right? And then at the end, he's like, I'm going to go back home to my wife. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saw three... Was the best, and then one, and then two? Yeah. 
I definitely agree with that. that what about cool. you guys? You agree with that ranking? Oh, yeah. I think one, and then three, and then two. I don't know. Really? I just like, I just like one more. It's just funnier for me. I think that's what I was looking for here. Not like something super believable, because the rest of the movie wasn't going for that kind of tone either. So when they pull it at the end, you know, I'm not looking for something that's super meticulous and trying to make perfect sense. I just thought it was funny. I like the chandelier and the freeze frame. Yeah, the chandelier and freeze frame was pretty And good. it was believable, and two was, two was obviously, I think, my least favorite, but... I really like the ending credits of how they, like, used the people on the card... <laughs> Yeah, they have ending credits too after the beginning credits with alphabetical with the with the cards. <laughs> well, that's that's how most movies did it. They would have like the main cast for the opening credits and then everyone for the closing credits. Yeah, I mean that's how. Yeah, you can still do it today, but yeah, it. What they did was, like, you know what movie does they that had a really credit well? Sequence twice, kind of. Yeah, you know what movie does that really well? That's a recent movie. Okay, Windfall. Great oh, yeah. opening credit scene that really sets up the movie because stuff's happening during, well, nothing's happening during the opening credit scene, but everything's happening during the opening credit scene. Can't just, back to, back to, back to Quo. Would this movie be better or worse with Donkey Kong in it? Better. Better. Well, it depends how they put him in it, but. As long as he doesn't get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> now He's the you butler. die. <laughs> it was Mario in the kitchen with yeah. the knife. I think the shots, though, maybe not for the opening, but I thought in the movie it's not supposed to have like majestic views or anything like that. But I thought for what the movie is, I thought the shots were pretty good, especially for the time. And Tim Curry's performance as Wadworth just really brought the movie together. His enthusiasm. The only thing that brought the movie together. Nah, all right, well. <laughs> but um, I don't think... I don't think Rowan Atkinson could have been that enthusiastic in the way that brings the movie together. Because Mr. Bean, he doesn't really talk that much. Never doubt Rowan Atkinson's enthusiasm. I, I will say, the only shots that I remember as standing out were... Um, like the lightning with the house, lightning in the background, and like the silhouette of the house. That was pretty cool. And also there was one shot where Colonel Mustard and Efren, who was with, were walking down the steps. You see their shadows on the walls. They're walking down the steps. That was pretty cool. Other than that, I don't really remember anything standing out. That was out. good when they were turning the corner. Yeah. yeah. Like also it. when like all of them were at the door, when the door opened, they were all like peering their head above each other. Uh yeah, I think it worked. I think it's just, it's uses a lot of good group shots, just cramming people into frame. It's funny. Yeah. And, oh, oh, yeah, actually, John Landis, who co-wrote Clue, directed the, the music video for Michael Jackson's Thriller. Just Fun fact. fact. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> good to know. Yep. Carter, did you say that this reminded you of another movie or something? I was going to say it definitely is inspired by a lot of movies that came before it and inspired a lot of movies that came after it. It's become a very, very big pop culture staple, kind of. A lot of people reference it when you when a, a murder mystery comes out nowadays. Say it's kind of like Clue and all that. I don't know. It's inevitable to think about Knives Out when you see this stuff but I was going to say like Glass Onion I think is much more Clue than Knives Out is I think Knives Out is much more Hitchcock than Murder Mystery yeah I think I think that's a good explanation well Glass Onion they're all they're all trapped in a mansion as well trapped in a mansion with the killer yeah I think that's why Knives Out works a lot better though because it even like it really did kind of market itself as like a, a serious version of Clue. Like, you got the house and all that imagery. They're in the manor. They've all these people, and they're trying to find a killer. 
because it it starts with a body and glass onion takes a while for someone to die but um well for you to know it, that someone's yeah, dying yeah yes. but like, even like that there's even like two dogs in in knives out and it's just really really trying to trick you and and then it kind of subverts that becomes something else about half an hour in yeah much more serious tone to it i mean it it just feels bad to compare it to Knives Out because <laughs> Knives Out is so good. Well, this one's so good for for what it does. Yeah, I'd agree. I think if I had watched it when it came out in the 80s, I would have really liked it. I'll say that. Although, depending on what theater you went to. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> true. All right. of your time, Warren. Well, is there any anything else you want to talk about before we get to ratings? Nope. I think we covered it all. All right. Well, let's... Should we be, be the negative Nancys first? Should we and Will go first? Go for oh, it, Warren. Like... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll keep it short and sweet. I think if you can sit through the first hour, you'll like the ending. But I would not take that for granted that most people would want to sit through the first hour. But I really liked the ending, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. I expected. Yeah. I, uh, if you clean up some of the jokes that I really just think are dry and some of the stuff that's just out of place, and yeah, the ending is very fun. But the road to get there, pretty bumpy. 6 out of 10. You're in lockstep today. <laughs> very much so, dude. Everything you said, I just, yep, that that's what I thought. Yeah, this is a very rare Will and Warren it, uh, this does not happen. I haven't disagreed with anything Occurrence you said today. Might be a first. Um, I thought it was a blast. I thought it's just trying to be a comedy, even more so than a murder mystery. But it works as a you know using that framework, and it it delivers on everything it sets out to do. Very enjoyable. Eight out of ten. Okay. All right. So. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously going to be biased because this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Whoa. So I have this at third, I think, my third favorite of all time. It's high praise. But it's not because of, like, an amazing plot or anything. It's just so, like, enjoyable and the mood is just there. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I... It's, it's a comfort movie, is basically what it is for me. Chicken soup for the soul. Well, I mean, chicken soup when you have a cold, sure. But, um, yeah, I'm going to give this one an 8.9. The highest rated movie is not Wow, okay. We said third All highest. Right. This is third, third highest. Third so. highest for us. So, okay, so okay. the third favorite doesn't necessarily mean third highest. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's more, this is more about just like enjoyment. Fair. Okay. So, yeah. Fair enough. You think like this is like your genre, Joseph? Is like, that I'm a, I'm right a big, big fan of mystery whodunits. Actually, from the 19, from the 1940s, the movie And Then There Were None, from the 1940s, I okay. really like that one. Although, I mean, it was a little. I mean, some stuff was 1940s, so it's obviously going to be a little bit weird. But I really like that one too. That was they're all trapped in a house, kind of similar to this. Yeah, classic Agatha Christie. Yeah, that's that's kind of the genre that I like Agatha Christie movies based off Agatha Christie books. So that's why you like to see how they run. What well, I that's <laughs> it's like an Agatha Christie book, but it looks like it's directed by Wes Anderson. So, <laughs> Warren, that's, I'm gonna disagree with you on anything you say about see how they run. That's for darn sure. <laughs> see how they run was so good. The oh, magic's gone. Fantastic, dude. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite movies from last year. Yeah, that's an underrated little gem. Definitely went under the radar, but... Oh, also, Warren, I'm going to disagree with you on the... You said that the cinematography isn't a huge thing for you. That's, for me, 
cinematography is a huge part of it. Because I was telling Carter for like, this is going to be a little bit off topic, but um, the original Blade Runner, I didn't oh, really here like. Here we go again. No, 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 not not 2049, not the original one. I didn't really like the movie, but just the visuals and cinematography. I mean, the story wasn't bad, but that just makes it an 8 out of 10. May I recommend some National Geographic um, <laughs> documentaries for you? Hey, I really like those too. So. <laughs> okay, okay. But, yeah, that's why Blade Runner 2049... I don't is, know what that has to do with Clue, though. Why do you think Clue had good cinematography? No, I was just... You said earlier you didn't think cinematography was a, a big part of it. No, I'm saying usually I don't notice it that much, but it annoyed me for Clue at the beginning. I thought the cinematography was fine in Clue. Oh, if we're talking about bad opening cuts and stuff, let's talk sure, about Amst- Amsterdam. Oh, my goodness. I can't stand... The cuts in that just felt so unprofessional. Yeah, I think that's where I think you're talking about editing. Yeah, when you're talking about the opening and how everything's too short. Yeah, that's I don't know. More if editing. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. That that would be behind the scenes. I don't know if that's it was they designed it to be that way or it's just the editor chose to do it that way. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, yeah there's not much to be redeemed from Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam is atrocious editing. Yeah, it was awful. Actually, you know who would have really fit in Clue and would have been interchangeable and you wouldn't have noticed a difference? If you put Christian Bale's performance from Amsterdam in this movie. Because that's what a lot of these performances felt like. (laughs) A lot of people wildly alternating between overacting and underacting and not knowing where to draw the line. I thought Christian Bale's performance in Amsterdam was okay. And then everybody else's was just not very good. Well, okay, well, his writing wasn't good, his performance. Well, obviously. But I think both were bad. (laughs) All right, anything else to to say before a certain... I've got nothing if you've got nothing. I think Colonel Lustre has something. All right, a lot of movies to talk (laughs) about, but, um, yeah, we kind of wrung all that we could out of this one, but... Ring the, I thought the it was bells a ring someone's at the door. I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. Good to be back. Good to have you, Joseph. Hope we can yep. have you back soon. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, yeah. I mean, one of my favorite things to do is talk about movies. So whenever you want to have me back. All right. Our Mikey Jr. Happen. Mikey Jr. <laughs> 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 Mikey in training. <laughs> but until next time, guys. We are the monkeys, and talking about movies is our business. And we'll see you around.